Can you analyze this paragraph? Pause and try now if you want to. Here's my completed tree. Last chance to avoid spoilers, because I'm going to unblur it now. Keep watching if you want to understand how to get from the paragraph to the analysis tree. I'm a philosopher. I'm doing this because reading and analyzing text are really important skills for figuring out which ideas are good, having debates, explaining ideas clearly, understanding what people are saying. They're relevant for all sorts of critical thinking and philosophizing. I wanted to use a real example, so I went to a popular blog. For context, here's the post. I picked this paragraph because it has a long list in it connected with this word and, so I thought that would make a good tree. The paragraph says, this is a nice goodbye to a beloved product. It's been under-remarked upon how good the Apple Newsroom site has been. Back in the Jobs era, Apple would post things to the hot news page of Apple.com, and when it was no longer hot or news, it would just disappear. Newsroom posts feel permanent. Apple's post today contains a nice gallery of the best and most beloved iPod models. The 2001 Original, the 2004 Mini, the 2006 Nano, which really propelled the lineup into what we then thought was the stratosphere of popularity. The 2007 Touch, the 2012 7th generation Nano, and the Shuffle. Now I'll go through how I analyzed the paragraph and made grammar trees for the sentences. If you want to see me actually make the trees, I live streamed it. The link is in the description. In this video, I'll just show you the trees and explain them. First sentence is pretty simple. There are no conjunctions, so we start with the verb, is. The subject is this, and the complement is goodbye. Then we have basic modifiers, a and nice, and we have a prepositional phrase. So to is a preposition, and its object is product, and then product has its own modifiers, a and beloved. So the main idea is this is goodbye, and then there are three modifiers, and then within one of the modifiers, there are additional modifiers. Second sentence has one conjunction and two finite verbs. Main idea here, it has been under remarked upon. Then we have the how clause giving us additional information. It tells us what has been under remarked upon, which is how good something has been. So the verb in this subclause is the has, along with the been non-finite verb. So the basic idea here is sight has been good. Sight is the subject, and good is a complement. We also have the, apple, and newsroom as modifiers for sight. Third sentence is more complex. We've got three finite verbs and three conjunctions. This would is mislabeled. It should be a verb, not a modifier. Main idea here is Apple would post things. And we've got this and, which links two clauses to the main idea. One is telling us it would disappear. The other one is telling us when it was. And then we've got an or group under that. So, or, hot, or news. When it was hot or news, it would disappear. And then there's a no longer modifier on that. And the entire thing has this other modifier, back, an adverb, which is modified itself by the preposition in. And then we have the noun for it, era, and era's modifiers. There are also some prepositions down at the bottom left. So to page and of apple.com, along with a few basic modifiers. Fourth sentence is really easy. It's only four words. So feel is the linking verb. It links posts to permanent. 
and newsroom tells us about what type of posts. Fifth sentence is far more complicated. However, although it's big, if you ignore this part, the which clause in the parentheses, it's actually not that hard. So the main structure is we have this contains verb up here. So we have post, contains, gallery, and then we have the preposition of, and then we're finding out what models, and then there's a colon and a list of models. So we've got the 2001 original, the 2004 mini, the nano, the touch, the other nano, and the shuffle. So it's going through a big list. So there's a lot of stuff and you get all these modifiers like the and a year repeatedly. But it's not actually very complicated or hard. It's just on the longer side. However, the parenthetical clause is actually hard. So other features, we have this and here. There are two ands. One of them is grouping together all the different types of iPod. And the left and is grouping together best with beloved or a double modifier on models. It's the best and most beloved iPod models. iPod, by the way, there is a modifier telling us the type of models rather than a noun, as you might expect. So ignoring the bottom part is kind of big, but not that hard. Now let's zoom in on the tricky part. Which refers to the 2006 Nano. That's the one we're talking about here. So the 2006 Nano propelled the lineup into what was thought to be the stratosphere of popularity. So there's a couple of weird features here. We've got the which twice. And I've got the what three times. That's because the which is doing two jobs in the sentence, and the what is doing three jobs. It is possible to do it with only one node per word, but I prefer to add a node for each job the word does. This mostly comes up with relative pronouns and relative adverbs. So the job of which is two parts. One, it is a conjunction that connects the propelled clause to the rest of the sentence, and also it refers to the 2006 nano and serves as the subject of propelled. So it's 2006 nano propelled lineup with the subject, verb, and object. The what within the prepositional into phrase is trickier. So I looked at additional example sentences as well as the dictionary to try to figure it out. This is a much simpler sentence with a what used in the same way. What we need is a commitment. It's very similar to the original version, what we then thought was the stratosphere of popularity. So here the what plays two roles. It is a conjunction that allows there to be two clauses in the sentence and it's also serving as the subject of is, but I have those as one node because they're in the same place. And it is also serving as the object of need. So when you say what we need, it means we need what. The what is out of order, but it actually goes in regular order after the need. We need what? We need something. And the what is linked through the linking verb is to commitment. So the what refers to commitment, so it's we need commitment. So if you understand the concept, we need commitment, then you can see that what is the object of need. It's the thing needed. Okay, then I moved on to a sentence that is a bit harder and more similar. The thing that we need is a commitment. So we here we have thing is commitment. And there's a, a that, an extra tricky word in here. And then we have we need thing, which refers back to commitment. So it's considering if it had a that in it, if you treat what as the thing that, then how do you do it? That's basically what the what means is the thing that. So I did a version with the thing that replacing the what. So if you look here and compare the trees, 
They're actually the same tree with just one thing changed. Where it used to say what, we've crossed it out and replaced it with these three nodes here. And then final version, they transformed the lineup into what we thought was a travesty. This is the most similar to the original sentence. And I've got the what in three places, which matches what I did in the actual sentence we're analyzing. So this what down here is the subject of need, and it refers to travesty into has what as the prepositional object as well, and what is the subject of was. So the what has to be linked through was to travesty, and it has to be the object of into, and it has to be the object of need. So it has three different jobs. So going back here, we can see it's repelled into what. So what is the object of into, and it is what was stratosphere. So what is linked to stratosphere? And we have we thought what. So what here also refers to stratosphere and is linked to we via thought. So the what has multiple roles. I've represented it as three, but you could even do four because this one here actually has a double role. It is both the subject of the was and it is the conjunction joining the thought clause. But those two roles are at least in the same place, whereas the other ones had to go in different places in the tree. All right, now that we have a handle on the parenthetical, we can zoom back out and see the whole tree. We have the relatively simple part And then we have the hard part that we analyze separately. Dealing with subtrees on their own can make things a lot easier. If you try to look at the entire sentence at once, it can be very overwhelming, but you can break it down into just one part at a time. And in particular, I took the prepositional phrase down here with the what in it and looked at that just by itself. Then after you understand a subpart better, you want to look at the whole thing again and understand how it fits in. So the meaning here is he's giving us extra details about the 2006 nano. The nano propelled the lineup's popularity. How high did it propel it? We thought at the time that that was the stratosphere. However, Apple is actually considerably more popular now than in 2006. It has gotten a lot more popular. So that was apparently not the stratosphere. There was a lot of room for growth. But at the time, it seemed like we were kind of hitting as popular as things could get because we didn't imagine anything like the 2022 iPhone, which is doing far better, has much higher sales than any of the iPods ever had. So now we've looked at the grammar of the sentences. Looking at sentence grammar can be skipped if it is easy enough and you have enough experience with trees so that you intuitively understand it. But if you're new to this kind of analysis or you find a sentence hard, then you can do the sentence grammar analysis. Then the next step after that is the paragraph analysis. What does the paragraph as a whole mean? The main thing here for making trees is to have relationship nodes, which I've put in Aqua. So there are actually two different trees here. On the left side, we have a simplified version that uses abbreviations, and on the right side, we have one with the full sentences. Other than that, they're the same tree. So I abbreviated the first sentence to the word goodbye. The second sentence is just under remark. The fourth one is permanent, third one is disappear, and last one is gallery. So in the very abbreviated version, which helps you understand the structure and see how things fit together better, we have goodbye, then there's extra detail under remark, then comparison, disappear, and permanent, and then also we have a result, which is the gallery. Paragraph trees are more difficult than grammar trees because coming up with the relationships between the sentences is more freeform, it's more creative than understanding grammar. Grammar follows clearer, stricter rules, whereas how sentences interact and relate to each other is a bit more freeform and take some thought to understand what's going on.
So it's a bit easier to understand with the full versions. We had the sentence about a goodbye. I took that as the main idea or conclusion of the paragraph, so I made it the root note. Then we had the sentence about something being under-remarked. So I thought that was a detail. It's giving us extra information, extra detail, kind of like a modifier. And then he gave us additional detail about that in the form of a comparison. He compared what happened in the past with what happens now. In the past, stuff disappeared, and now it feels permanent. This comparison shows that the site has been good. It is making the point in this previous sentence. And then, elaborating further on the newsroom posts feel permanent, he told us about the result, which is that all these different iPods ended up in a gallery. They have old stuff. It hasn't just disappeared, so they can reuse it. Now that we have trees for the individual sentences, as well as the full paragraph, we can zoom out and see the entire thing together. It's worth noting that paragraph trees do not have to be one sentence per node. If the sentences are more complicated, and especially if there are multiple ideas in a single sentence, then you may want to separate those ideas into separate nodes. So the nodes can range in size from one clause up to one sentence, or a paragraph tree. Zooming out, we now have the entire thing put together. This uses the five individual sentence trees, and it uses the paragraph relationship nodes, detail, comparison, and result, to combine all of them into the overall tree. So you can see the full structure of the paragraph. This is the same as the paragraph tree, except where a node had a sentence, it has been replaced with the entire tree for that sentence. It's nice to see how trees can fit together. So let's zoom in on this. At the top, we've got our original sentence, and then it is connected with detail. Then you go down, and we've got more information. Specifically here is the detail. And then under this sentence, we have the comparison. Comparison has on the left and the right the two things being compared. And the right one has the result, which is this whole big sentence that we spent a lot of time on telling us about all the different iPods. Then we can zoom out and see the entire thing, all of the different trees I made when analyzing this paragraph. So you may have some questions like, is this analysis worth the effort? Is it useful enough to put in all this time? The answer is, if it is easy for you, if you have done this kind of thing enough times and practiced it, that it has become intuitive to you, then you can sometimes get away with skipping steps, because you have the skill to back that up. However, if you haven't already done this a bunch of times, then it is well worth your time to practice it. It will help you understand what you're doing more clearly, and then you can use those skills in the future, even when you spend less time on something. So if you imagine that every time you read something, it would take this much work, that would be bad and would not work well. And if you see the alternatives as either doing this much conscious work every time or glossing over the details and not doing very much analysis, then there's no way to win because you need detail to be a good philosopher, a good thinker, but you don't have the time and energy to go into this level of detail in every single thing. And the solution is automization. You have to practice these skills, which does take time, but only a limited number of times. Once you get good at it, then you'll only do it occasionally or on particularly hard cases. With enough practice, you can master these skills. So when you read paragraphs, you understand this level of detail without having to think of it. You want to train your subconscious to be able to do this much analysis with a low error rate. The more you practice things in a conscious, explicit way, and do a really good job with those, the more you can learn to do things better with low attention and low effort when your subconscious is in charge and doing the work. People who try to become good at philosophy or have intellectual debates or do critical thinking often get stuck. And the reason they're getting stuck, there are many reasons, but one of the main ones is that their subconscious is not good enough 
at reading and listening and understanding a bunch of words. Their subconscious cannot automatically make all these trees and get them right. And they're not able to make up for that with a bunch of conscious effort either. The solution is practice these skills and get better at them. So that's why I'm teaching them. You can find my philosophy articles, which generally cover more advanced issues, at criticalfallibilism.com. If you liked this, please like, subscribe, and share this with friends.